one of the greatest novels in the world, and one of the greatest horror movies and horror books in the world, Frankenstein. Now, today we know as Frankenstein as like the father of horror fiction. And today we know as Mary Shelley as one of like the mother of writing horror fiction and also great Halloween costumes, as it says in the Jody in the Frankenstein part. And today I want to tell you about the Frankenstein story. Now this will be a, just a brief summary, okay? Now these aren't the real words, but these are just a little short summary into a little book. So I'll be I'll be reading parts of this and then explaining it into my own words. Okay. So this is the ship. This is ship. Let me read this paragraph. In the treacherous waters close to the North Pole, explorer Captain Walton peered over the side of a ship. Only thin channel of water separated it from the ice. Drop the anchor, he ordered his crew. It's too dangerous to continue. I hope continue should improve soon, he added under his breath. He knew that if the ice kept sickening, it would crush the ship into matchsticks. Would he ever reach the pole? He already did so. And then the captain gazed into a distance and saw a figure driving a sleigh. And who is driving? Where did that come from? Wondered Walton, staring. And who is that? Who is that driving? He hardly even looked human. The sled ran. The sled raced north over the ice and was lost to view. And then that night, sailors were kept awake by eerie noises as the ice creaked and rubbed against the ship. By dawn, they saw they were completely surrounded by icebergs, and one carried another dog sled. This time, the driver was definitely human. Walton and his crew helped the stranger on board and put him in a cabin, in the captain's cabin. And he was brought a soup and some warm blankets. He said, my name is Victor Frankenstein, Dr. Victor Frankenstein, and I suffered greatly. It all began long ago, and then the captain, what well, the captain was getting spellbound into the guy and the doctor's, the doctor's little story. Chapter two, to create life. From his window, Victor Frankenstein could find, could watch a beautiful view, view of the world. For but she doesn't. The world is full of mysteries. He said, "Who knew what powers we could master if we only knew, only if we knew how?" So for two long years, he took extra classes on anatomy, and then he learned everything he could that his tutors could teach him: how the blood, the blood circulates, the nature of the air we breathe. But there was one question that Victor was asking: Could we make life as well? And he began to take extra classes. And then he started an experiment. One day, Victor came across an article by Galvani, an Italian scientist who had managed to animate a lifeless frog and make a jump using the power of electricity. He said, "Could I do the same?" Galvani, wait a minute, Gal Galvani, the Italian scientist, only used a little spark of electricity to make a little spark of light. But what if I have more power, say a lightning bolt, could I create life? So he started an experiment. He makes chemicals every day, and one day he looked at himself in the mirror and he was red and hot. And he said, I'll take a break after I do this experiment. So he kept on mixing chemicals, and then he needed one thing that, that instructed him. He needed a body, not just chemicals, but a body. He went to graveyards to steal bones and rotten flesh to make the skin and brains, hearts, lungs, and every organ he could find. And later, he added water to his body to get electricity. Then he turned on the electricity. Then he turned on the electricity and went into the monster. And that moment, Victor saw what he had done. He meant to make create a magnificent creature but instead he made a monster i made a monster he whispered a creature crow as if trying to speak but victor didn't understand it then he rushed out reached out a flabby hand 
unable to play bear it, Victor ran away. Victor spent the rest of the night pacing up and down in darkness, drenched by rain and tortured by nightmare. Victor called a familiar voice. He, Victor turned around and saw his old friend, Henry. So he, so he, so, well, Victor came back to his lab with Henry and saw that it was a complete mess. All of his experiment was gone, except all of his notebooks, but one was missing, his journal. And then Victor got into a fever. Got into a fever. So, um... Victor went, just went away from the uni away from the university after that, after... <coughs> and then, when Victor returned, returned back to Geneva, um, there was a letter from his father waiting for him. He opened it eagerly, but his face turned pale as he read. Let me read his letter to you. Dear Victor, how can I send such bad news? It is with tears and wretchedness I write. Your little brother William is dead, murdered. I must tell you how. We had gone for a family walk in the woods. We stopped to rest and we grown and fell asleep. William must have wandered out. When we woke, he was gone. We, we searched everywhere. Eventually, I've discovered his lifeless body. The marks of the murderer's fingers still red around his neck. The locket containing a picture of his dead mother had been stolen from him. Who could have robbed and killed an innocent child? Surely only a monster, someone without any human feeling. Hurry home to comfort us in our grief. Your loving father. And then Victor was like, Poor William. Still, and then Henry cried, Poor William. At least he is in peace now. He does not need our pity. We must keep that for the living. And later, when the friends returned to Geneva, Victor said, Victor was sure that he saw a little monster when they were riding in their carriage. The monster! And then it went away. And he knew that the creature killed it. Tormented by revenge, uh, Victor Victor was like Victor was like heard that uh, the aunt uh, his, that his brother's aunt was killed, murdered, and actually hanged because of finding the locket in her pocket. And and the monster was actually all of this. So the monster was said, "I'll tell you my tale first. The first thing I can remember was a bright light. I think it must have been the sun. I followed it until it became too hot, and then I looked around for somewhere to rest. Eventually, I found myself in the forest. I didn't know how to live, and I was miserable. But slowly, I learned to eat berries when I was hungry, to drink from a stream when I was thirsty, thirsty, and to cover myself when I was cold. I longed for company. One day, I met a shepherd, but he ran away. I followed him to the village. It looked like heaven. Full of neat cottages and happy people. But the village was shut and threw stones driving me away. I hid in a ruined hut. From the hut I could see a remote cottage. An old and man and his children lived there. The old man was blind and his children looked after him. They were very poor and rarely knew how to enough to eat. But they were always kind to each other. Something they sang to each other. And I said it was the sweetest sound there could be. The music filled me with emotions I didn't understand. Sometimes they read aloud from books. At first I didn't know the words, but slowly I learned. I longed to be part of the family, but I didn't dare show myself. Instead, I left gifts for them with, like, firewood and berries. Those were his gifts. And then, one, and then he was like this. I was terrified when I saw my own ugliness reflection in a pool of water. No wonder everyone drove me away. So, one day when the old man was alone, I went to him. I went to him and asked. Him, asked him for company. He was the first nicest person I ever saw. When the children came, the girl fainted, and the, and the boy chased me away. And then I found a boy. He looked much like you. He tried to scream, but I string, but I put his, my hands around his neck. I squeezed his throat to silence him and killed him. As he lay at my feet, I noticed a locket around his neck. It was pretty, so I took it. I knew people would come after the boy, so I took a hiding place. Not far away, I found a sleeping woman. Woman, I had nothing to give her except the locket. And because of that, she was hanged. I heard she was hanged. All this happened because I'm alone and miserable. No man will be my friend. No woman will love me. I need company. A bride. You must make her for me. 
a monster bride. So like Victor was like, make another creature just like you? No way! You're gonna create a whole race that will destroy all mankind. Uh, and then like Victor Cadet, you do not deny me this one kindness. Help me be happy and I'll be again be good. I will take my bride to live peacefully, far away from the people. You will never see us again. Victor could have helped feeling sorry for the monster, although the sight of it sickened him. There was there there were the threats. The creature was more powerful than any man. It would be safer to do what it asked. Victor swallowed hard. I agree. When Victor returned home Victor returned home, he told Elizabeth, his future wife, that he had to go somewhere to do his work. And he had to bring Henry with him. Free at last, Victor took a boat to a remote rocky island and rented an old hut. Then he set to work. He mixed chemicals as he did during his experiment. He got batteries and then and then he made the a creature but looking like a woman. Looking like a woman. And then he was like he couldn't bear it. And then he just was filled with fury. He began tearing his work to pieces, covering the floor with scraps of bloody flesh. The monster howled, You think you can find a wife and be happy? Well but while I am wretched and alone. But I will have my revenge. I'll be with you on your wedding night. Victor sprang for the door, but the monster was quicker. Moments later it was disappearing over the water in a boat. And so Victor threw away that boat, uh, away the basket, and then he saw his friend dead. It didn't kill anyone. He will. It was the monster. The monster I made. Really, sir? Replied. Then he was right. Perhaps you'd like to tell the doctor about that. He seems to have a lunatic. Realized Victor, and the rest of what he had been going to say died on his lips. Victor spent that night in a jail cell, but then a fish, but then a fishmonger, a local fisherman, had seen him on the island at the time of the murder, proving him innocent. He was released the next morning, and then he went on to marry, marry Elizabeth. And then they, and then they rented a hotel, making sure Elizabeth was safe. Elizabeth was safe. He went outside. He went outside and waited for the monster to come. It didn't. But until he heard a scream, he went up and saw his bride dead. So he, so he shouted, no, and then he just like shot and tried to shoot the gun, the Franken, the monster Frankenstein, but it was too fast. And when Victor's father heard the news, he was overwhelmed with horror and collapsed. He died a few days later, and then he would begin to, he would begin ranting about the monster and was locked in an abyssin. Eventually he was released, and now I will have my own revenge. So... Um, I will pursue it to the ends of the earth, repeated Victor to the entrance captain. And so here I am. His voice faded away, and his voice and his head was sagging onto his pillow. And then he died. But then the monster came. Then the monster came. And you get it. The captain saw that the monster killed Victor Frankenstein. I was like, hey, you killed him. Get away. And he said, you just want to kill people. And that monster said, that may be how it looks like, but it isn't. I may look like a horrible man, but I'm actually true and kind in myself. And I know I'm an outcast and a murderer. You may hate me, but I hate myself more. Only death can bring, can get away my misery. Then what will you do? Asked the captain, thinking that he will just go into the earth and freeze to death with killing a few people. I will build a fire in the north. And I'll put myself into the flames so that I'll rest in peace. Moments later, it was in distance. So yeah, that's the story of Frankenstein, at, at least the short part of it. And today, we know this as one of the greatest novels of all. And if you like the story as much as I did and like my YouTube channel, please consider subscribing, hit the like button. Hit the like button and also please 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 share this video to others and hit the bell button to all notifications So visit my patreon page and if you have any comments if my comments are turned off then I'll I, I provide I'll ask you I'll ask you this Please if you my comments are off in my YouTube videos You can just write my comments in my email 20jor at neighbor.com so yeah, that'll be the end of my video, and I'll see you next time. Shazam! Yeah! Bye!